Hey everyone, um, this is uh, part two of the uh, Russian dosimeters um, that uh, hopefully you've seen in the previous video. Um, if not, it'll actually be as a link in the description. So click there if you want to see the, the first one. Um, so this, are the, this is the uh, box of ten um, dosimeters I got, um, which are um, Russian Soviet from dated uh, 1988 as it turned out. Um, what I want to do on this video is um, take one of the uh, the dosimeter pens apart and um, we'll have a look inside um, and see how that's constructed because uh, um, there's uh, a lot of theory um, about on the internet about the, how these work but not much about how they actually physically constructed so it'd be nice to see that. Um, <clears throat> I've also been doing a bit of translation with the um, the instruction guide. Um, this is the guide to usage, how it works, all that sort of stuff. So uh, thankfully uh, uh, Google Translate has been helping a lot with that and it has actually explained quite a lot about how all this actually works. Um, well worth reading. Um, the, the charger turns out not to contain a battery at all um, as I've been led to believe previously. Um, it actually uses a Pizza electric um, generator. So uh, as you turn the knob, it actually it, uh, it compresses four um, piezo crystals, which generate the electricity to then charge up the pen. So in the top, you've got uh, the eyepiece that you look through, and in the bottom, you've got the electrode with um, a rubber, plasticky rubber um, cap on the end. Now this is actually charged up at the moment, so I'm just going to discharge this. See this is where reading the manual actually makes a difference. See the uh, the shaped end on there just happens to be the same shape this one. There. Magic. So if I short out this now. So going by the drawing that's in the uh, booklet here, um, it appears as though, if you look where the, the edge of the body is, it appears everything goes in from this end and then pushes up against um, an edge here. Um, so everything seems to push in from this end and have little screw caps which um, obviously stop everything coming out so um, so I think we'll take off this this ring here first I couldn't really find a screwdriver big enough to uh, to go across that so improvised um, There's, um, there's now a black rubber seal. So here we have the internal plunger which makes connection with the uh, the charging the charging pin and um, keeps out moisture from the in insides of it. Over there, the 
diaphragm fitted into that. Got clear plastic cover with a hole in it, then another electrode inside. Just gonna see if pushing this. Here we are. So we have the eyepiece in this end. And the electrode here. Now obviously the uh, the body of this is um, one sided circuit and then that is the other. Now reading in the, um, the instructions here there is a a 3000 picofarad capacitor in here so uh, from what I understand now is it's not the the quartz fiber or whatever it is that actually moves that loses its charge it's actually the capacitor um, so let's see So we've just got a small small plastic window. So referring back to the drawing, we've uh, taken off the plastic cap here, the uh, retaining ring, the diaphragm, um, and this bit here which covers up the electrode. Um, number 11 is the capacitor, I know that from the translation, which should be. This part in, this part here. Interesting, it has two cutaways in the, uh, this is aluminium. So, the eyepiece should just come out. So obviously has the uh, the scale in it as well. Well, I can actually see a fibre on there. You might not be able I can just catch it in the light. It's a little tiny, tiny little loop. Just next to my finger there. You can just see the light reflecting off it. So this is the actual electroscope here um, obviously connected to the, the capacitor there to provide the power so um, so because it's uh, positively charged the, the two parts want to separate so the, the, court, the obviously the that metal loop 
is fixed and the quartz I'm presuming it's a quartz fine but there was no mention of quartz in in the instruction manual um, so what it actually is I don't know so I'm, I'm presuming it's quartz because um, all the details on the internet about these always detail quartz so I suspect that's what it is but um, so that would make it move away and then of course that would then track across the display in the eyepiece with some magnification. The um, there is mention of the magnification in the in the user guide of 90 times. Okay, have a quick look at the eyepiece. looks just completely flat aluminium spacer Another spacer. So that piece down inside there looks like it's, it's actually held in with these these little crimps. Can't be much left in it now, it doesn't weigh anything more. So I suspect that isn't really anything at all. So if we refer back to the drawing, uh, we've already looked at this bit here. We've got uh, the capacitor, the electroscope with the fibre, we've got this part, I think that's the bit that's inside which doesn't look like it's doing anything at all. There's a spring there, I haven't seen that. Um, this bit here is probably this bit I've just taken out. Another lens. So there you go, um, I found that quite interesting, uh, taking that apart, um, I hope you, everybody else did as well. Um, if you did, hit the like button, that's uh, greatly appreciated. Uh, if you've got any questions or anything, leave them in the comments section. Um, uh, after this I will be uh, hopefully taking apart the, the charger um, to see the, uh, the piece of electric charging mechanism, how that works, uh, which will be in part three. Okay, thanks for watching and uh, see you next time.